Excuse me, little dog. We got to do the rant like that. Oh, good lord. Hi, guys. Well, I know a couple of you have been asking, where have I been? Here, I will say I have, uh, I have been working harder the last uh, two weeks than at any two-week period of my entire life getting the Airbnb bugs in a jar Airbnb back up and running for the year and good lord I've just had to put the collapse of global industrial civilization on hold, but since you guys are screaming to see the little dog to make sure he is still around, say hi to the boat. Say yes, we. I am still around. The little dog has survived, so uh, we will try to get at least this one rant out before I'm back to work tomorrow. It is a chilly Sunday night here. In the collapse of global industrial civilization, where are we? We are at May 14th, 2023, and I think in my last uh, chronicle of the collapse, I said I might be starting all of my new, all of my new rants with a, a quote about overpopulation. Uh, so we're going to hear, we're going to lead off tonight's rant with a quote from none other than James Lovelock. I think James is, is James still with us or did we lose James? I think we lost James a couple of years ago at about a hundred years old, but before he, he died, and I think he died, this is what he had to say. Those who fail to see that population growth and climate change are two sides of the same coin are either ignorant or hiding from the truth. These two huge environmental problems are inseparable and to discuss one while ignoring the other is irrational. <coughs> so we are going to hear if we ever hear, and I don't know, uh, we ever hear the word overpopulation in uh, this rant right over in the mainstream media uh, about those greenies, about the bright green lies coming uh, forward and, and of course which you will never see in any of these stories is there would be no need for a green revolution if there were not 8 billion people on the planet. Uh, this whole thing, this entire discussion is one more aspect of overpopulation you will not hear overpopulation anywhere in, in all of this single biggest lie of the 21st century and that's about saving the planet for moving from fossil fuels to whatever pie in the sky. Uh, this is a story about overpopulation as every single environmental story the collapse of civilization, the collapse of a planet, is a story about too many people on this planet. So with that little amplification and clarification, uh, other than a, a total failure to admit the single biggest element of the story, this is a pretty good story, and good Lord, and it goes on and on and on. And uh, good for the Washington Post. These are those, uh, I guess, those fossil fuel shills at the Washington Post. 
talking about and you know exposing some of the bright green lies about the uh, unadulterated horseshit green revolution to save the planet so this is another way of saying fry not just frying pan or the fire but frying pan and the fire take it away Washington Post instead of lithium or copper we're gonna talk about nickel and I'm only gonna good Lord I'll put the link on here and anybody who does not understand uh, what this planet is, where this planet is heading needs to read this entire story we're gonna read the first maybe the first half of it uh, take it away Washington Post to meet electric vehicle demand, <coughs> industry turns to technology long deemed hazardous. And um, we're going to go over to Indonesia for uh, this story. Here is just one picture. This is uh, a picture of how to save the planet. This is a big uh, nickel smelter in Indonesia. This is saving a planet by dipping a planet in acid, I guess. We are going to uh, dip the planet in acid to save the planet. All right. <clears throat> On a remote island close to where the Pacific meets the Indian Ocean sits one of the first refineries built specifically to support the world's transition away from fossil fuels. Rocks unearthed here contain traces of nickel, a key ingredient in electric vehicle batteries, extracting it Refining it and readying it for export is a gargantuan task. More than one billion dollars has been sunk into this processing facility. The first in Indonesia to use an acid leaching technology to convert low-grade laterite nickel ore, which the country has in abundance into a higher grade material suitable for batteries. Foreign investors and lenders, you know the banksters behind it all bankrolling the, uh, well I guess the second biggest lie on the planet, the number one biggest lie being there's not enough people on the planet, but you know what we're saying here the banksters, the investors, and the banksters financing the bright green lies of saving the planet by dipping it in acid. Those foreign investors and lenders cite the project as evidence of their commitment to fighting climate change. Yes. But the sprawling facility bordered on one side by forest, or what's left of a forest, and on the other by the clear blue sea, mm -hmm. <coughs> faces a major challenge. <coughs> Damn it. What to do? What do you do? with the roughly 4 million metric tons of toxic waste produced every year, enough to fill approximately 1,667 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Yes, in 2020, the companies behind the, you know, the nickel refinery to save the planet told the government they had a solution. They would pump the mining waste into 
the ocean. Yes, they ultimately backtracked from that idea in the face of public pressure, but it's not clear that the on-land storage alternative they have offered instead is significantly safer. Indonesia is the world's top producer of nickel by a wide margin, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, along with Australia. The country has the largest nickel reserves left on Earth. And as global demand for nickel surges, you know, for your little electric vehicle to save the planet, company executives and Indonesian government leaders in their company executives' pockets are turning to a refining technology long considered too risky to embrace, too perilous for the environment and for local communities. This technology using acid, using acid under conditions of intense heat and pressure to remove the nickel from the raw ore, from the raw ore has never been tested before in Indonesia, where the frequency of earthquakes, heavy rainfall, and landslides make it especially treacherous to transport and store hazardous waste. The process poses steep environmental costs that have yet to be reckoned with, according to interviews with more than 40 people familiar with the country's nickel industry, visits to six largely isolated mining villages in eastern Indonesia, and visual analyses by mining experts. Yep, 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 yep. Indonesian officials say this new refining technology is needed to harness these nickel resources, which they uh, which they uh, which they uh, hope will transform the country's future, like oil did for Saudi Arabia. At least ten other projects using this same technology are already under development, according to the Indonesian Nickel Mining Association. <clears throat> um, officials have made it a priority to build a nickel supply chain, hmm. <clears throat> banning the export of raw nickel ore for processing abroad and approving the development of acid-based refining facilities as well as additional conventional nickel smelters at a rate unparalleled elsewhere. <clears throat> and th this one I love. The, the ultimate irony of all of this, guys, for, for anyone still swallowing one ounce of this horse shit, okay? If, if there's one person uh, still swallowing this crap and thinking they had heard it all, how about this one? <clears throat> Despite official pledges to reduce carbon emissions, the Indonesian government has approved the construction of coal-fired power plants specifically to support the processing of nickel for the electric vehicle industry. Hmm, imagine that. I think that's called robbing Peter to pay Paul. <clears throat> Much of the nickel and EV batteries used by automakers such as Tesla, Hyundai, and Ford is already sourced from Indonesia by way of battery manufacturers in China. And by 2030, when global nickel demand is forecast to be 52% higher than in 2020, Indonesia will probably churn out more than two-thirds 
of the supply uh, according to all of these people who track this stuff. <clears throat> the surging interest in nickel is part of the global boom in demand for a range of metals used in making EVs, which typically require six times the mineral inputs of their fossil fuel burning counterparts to make them run. But while the transition to EVs is widely considered essential in addressing climate change, there has often been little recognition of the toll that extraction and processing of these raw materials, including technologies now urgently needed to produce the quantity and quality of minerals required, will take on the lives and livelihoods of local communities and the surrounding environment. <clears throat> Laterite. Laterite nickel ore comes in two forms, and until recently there was no need to use the acid leaching technology in part because India has been mining the kind of nickel known as saprolite, which can be processed partly by using traditional smelters. But Indonesia and the world is running out of saprolite ore, and now what will be left is lower grade limonite ore, which consists of less than 1.5% nickel, making processing by traditional means nearly impossible. So 1.5%, so 98.5% percent of the stuff they're digging out of the ground is is waste, it is useless shit. Uh, after they completely obliterate some tropical rainforest off the face of the planet to dig out, so what, for every ton, 98.5% of 2,000 pounds what is that? Uh, 1,997 pounds are, are mining waste. Uh, something like that. My math might be off a decimal. <clears throat> the, the decline in saprolite, you know, the good stuff, has occurred just as the demand for battery grade nickel has spiked. Most nickel mined in Indonesia has previously gone into products like stainless steel, which can use a lower grade mineral, but batteries require a higher standard, which has placed an unprecedented premium on the acid leaching process. Uh, anyway, guys, this goes on and on uh, here they're talking to one of these villagers said he used to drink from the rivers that run past his village but since the nickel mine added its acid leaching refinery two years ago the waterways have turned dark red so thick with pollution at some points that rows of coconut trees have been killed off. He doesn't know what is in the water, only that it bleeds into the sea, and that his nephews have had to go farther and farther out to find fish. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Um, and then, of course, these planet eaters uh, insists their operation has not had a negative impact on the environment. Yes, and that the pollution along the coast was not related to waste produced by their plant. Mm -hmm. All of their operations are in full compliance with government 
requirements that I'm quite sure I, I have no doubt that that is a true statement. That the government is in the hands of the nickel miners. These giant foreign corporations, you know, these battery uh, manufacturers coming out of China, these foreign investors, the banksters behind it all, have the Indonesian government bought and sold. I 100% believe that uh, what these planet eaters are doing, poisoning the rivers, killing the coconut trees and the fish and, and everything else, so you can drive around your, your goddamn little Toyota Prius talking about how you're saving the goddamn planet with your electric vehicle. Yeah. Uh, th this is a scam, people. Th this is a scam. This is a lie. And if you're getting sucked into this sh bullshit, uh, you only have yourself to blame for believing this crap. Can't you understand this, people? Uh, can't you see? As Bill Hicks would say, it's really not that hard to figure out uh, how you're being screwed by, 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 by the whole group. Uh, you, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just sick of it. Uh, like other inhabitants of his village, which sits at the foot of the nickel mining operation, he has never owned a car and has no idea why there has been a sudden interest in the mineral that sat untouched on his land for so long. We had a comfortable life before this. Uh, so what is high pressure acid leaching is a method of refining low grade nickel ore by combining it with sulfuric acid under high pressure and heat, producing a slurry, a slurry that uh, allows for the extraction of pure high-grade nickel with 98.5% of the slurry going into the damn river. Uh, good lord. Uh, th this crap uh, goes on and on on. The leaching process is, of course, energy intensive, and generating that energy produces about 20 tons of carbon dioxide per ton of nickel, hmm. or about double the amount of the prevailing processing method. And then there's the waste, which produces an enormous amount of corrosive chemical tailings, often in the millions of tons for each mine per year that are extremely challenging to neutralize, store, and contain. Even after the slurry is treated, this waste can contain harmful heavy metals such as chromium and all the usual uh, anyway so what are the choices to deal with this since not breeding is not a choice so since not breeding is not a choice we have putting the waste into a ditch behind a dam, drying out the waste and stacking it in vacant lots, and do not forget pumping it into the ocean. Yes. Uh, Anyway, then they go through all of the uh, environmental disasters that are already uh, that are already on record. Uh, 
Uh, there you go. Good Lord. And this goes on and on and on. Um, obviously, I'm looking for the word overpopulation in this story. Uh, then uh, interviewing all of these planet eaters, blaming it. It's the villagers' fault. Yes. Uh, then all of this uh, talk about, obviously, uh, a bunch of this uh, stuff is ending up in the ocean. And then don't forget photos showing the devastating levels of deforestation surrounding all of this mining the planet to save the planet. Uh, even if the tailings are not being actively pumped into the sea, there don't appear to be any significant controls over what is flowing out of the mine and entering waterways. Yes. Uh, here, I, I love this quote from a planet eater. Quote, frankly, I feel a bit ashamed to be part of an industry that is allowing this to happen. Do you think so? Uh, good Lord, don't forget the booming industry as old mining companies are expanding and new ones are taking root, taking over large tracts of land, residents say. Uh, then we have the bulk carrier ships congregating along the coastlines. Uh, Jesus. Anyway, then don't forget China. China and South Korea uh, are the battery manufacturers for the EVs. And here is Ford Motor Company, uh, you know, joining ranks with all of this. Uh, and here, don't here's France weighing in on some uh, big ass industrial park, which has more than doubled its footprint in the past five years. Satellite imagery shows. Uh, so France is in with this, uh, uh, there you go, and then of course all the planet eaters talking about how they're saving the planet from, uh, fossil fuel emissions by dipping the planet in acid. Yes, don't you love this? These uh, head of sustainability at all of these planet eating, all of these planet eating corporations have a sustainability office uh, lying out their goddamn teeth here. It, it just flat out lying. Uh, or just refusing to talk to uh, reporters. Gee, environmental regulations in Indonesia have long been difficult to enforce. Hmm. They are prone to corruption. Huh. Yeah, I love this one. The government is supposed to protect us. Hmm. But now we see they only protect those who have money. Ha! Huh. Imagine that. Uh, 
Good Lord, this is a hell of a piece. Uh, that is the closing sentence. In June of 2021, a few months after the finery on, on Obira began operating, Luhut visited the island donning a red hard hat as he examined the new acid technology. Uh, Elias and other residents of Kawasi said they had expected him to stop at their village where they hoped to show them the rivers that had started to run red and the trees that had died when the roots were covered by sludge from the mine. But he never came, the locals said. There you go. 615 comments. Talking about the uh, 209 thumbs up to this comment from Al. Is this worth it? They say that EV cars are the new disposable product that might not be recycled. Insurance companies are totaling EVs that have even slightly damaged batteries the cost to replace them in parts and labors is more than a new car. How sad we have become. How sad. How pathetic. How just absolutely pathetic that, that uh, we have become swallowing all of these bright green lies bullshit uh, anything to admit that there's too damn many people on this planet how clueless we have become anyway so good to be back ranting get out there and enjoy your little save the planet ev why you can, you clueless little greenie. You make me want to puke. Oh, I need to get back to staining my tiny house. Tomorrow, come see me at Bugs in a Jar Farm, but leave your little EV at home. Bye, guys.